Hey guys, welcome back to the Book Haven with Rachel and Raven. We're so glad you're here. Grab a cup of something warm and yummy, and let's get this episode started. Um, so we have Simile back today to talk to us about some books that she would recommend for getting you started on your health journey in 2024. Yeah. And we all are looking for something like that, right? Uh, what what so, do you have for us? So a lot of the time at the beginning of the year, a lot of people are thinking, okay, it's time for me to go ahead and yeah. like get my life in order again. Now that I've been <laughs> kind of unhinged for the me. last <laughs> few weeks or months or whatever, you know. So um, Rachel and Raymond asked me to think of some books that I might recommend somebody look at. And so I brought a couple. Um, the first one that I would recommend is I'm So Effing Hungry. And it is and it, effing. That is the last last name. Word. It is effing for real. Uh, Why We Crave, What We Crave, and What to Do About Us by Dr. Amy Shaw. Um, and she's a great one to follow on Instagram if you're an Instagram girl. Um or guy, if there's guys yeah. listening. Um, she's really great to follow. She's got a lot of really good information on there. But this book kind of goes into the hows and whys of hunger and why we get hungry and why am I just feeling unsatisfied and what can you do about that and how can you kind of mitigate some of those cravings with proper nutrition? Because yeah. most of the time when you're hungry, it's because you're missing some nutrient somewhere. Your body wants it and you just keep feeding it French fries and you don't understand <laughs> what the problem is. So. Yeah, so she kind of goes through like what that might mean and stuff. And then the next book that I brought that I love, and Rachel, you can probably attest to some of this with me as well, is The Trim Healthy Mama Plan. And this actually, you know, in the last episode, you asked me, was there any book that like started you on your journey? Well, this is my first book that I think started me on the journey of like really looking at eating for health as opposed to just some, you know, reading the latest bad diet. Book, yeah, you right. know. This is the first book that really I felt like, okay, I'm starting to kind of understand a little bit and it's kind of taking some of the muddied waters away. And so if you're familiar with um, Trim Healthy Mama, they have a big gigantic book that they came out with first. And then don't read that one. That one is the one. There's so much in there and it's pretty overwhelming. So um, then they later came out with Trim Healthy Mama Plan book. Um, and this is pretty easy to read, I would say. Yeah. And this was the first book where I really started to look at food, um, for what it's supposed to do, which is to feel your body and the different ways that it feels your body and the different things that, um, help your body and, you know, yeah. function better. So, well, and I think their big shtick is the, like separating the carbs and the fats and not eating those together, Yes, which can be kind of confusing when you're learning about it, which is mm -hmm. why, like, so when I first read them, it was only that big book that yeah. was horrendous mm -hmm. and so confusing. And I very quickly was like, I don't even know what they're talking about. But then I think this one came out and, and I picked it back up again. I was like, let me try this again. Um, and I did, I had success when I, yep. when I did it, I lost weight. I felt good. But for me, it was hard because, um, like my family never fully got on board. <laughs> Yeah, that, that part is really hard when you're yeah, doing any kind of yeah. yeah, and so it was like, I got to the point where I had managed it, but then, you know, my world turned upside down and we moved and, um, but that time period was so hard. Mm -hmm. And um, so by the time we actually got to Louisiana, I was like, just trying to survive right. and figure out moving to a whole nother state and stuff. So um, I've always thought, oh, I need to go back to that. I need to go back to it. Cause yeah. I don't know anybody that has tried that and not been like, if you stick to the plan, you are successful. It yeah. obviously works for your body. Yeah. Um, it's just not the easiest because it's so different than how we eat. Yeah, yeah. it is. They do have, now if you get in their Facebook groups, that's you know yeah. super helpful because there's a lot of easier recipes than necessarily the ones that the sisters put out. Yeah. Those are um, often a little bit more complicated. Um, they, they bring it down to where it's easy, but it's just a lot of ingredients and, right, you know, yeah. and that type of thing. But even going through FDN school and all of that, yeah. you know, learning about the different types of um, nutrition and the different ways that we nourish our body through the whole thing, I was like, even the main thing that they talk about is the metabolic typing diet within the school. It's basically the Trim Healthy Mama Plan. Like it's basically what it is. And there's a little bit of tweaks to it, but it's yeah. very, very, very similar. Um, and it's just a matter of figuring out, you know, are you, this is where the hair tissue mineral analysis is helpful are you more inclined to need more carbs or are you more inclined to need more fats? And so it works really well with that. But the 
main premise of Trim Healthy Mama, which is really important, is protein. Everything yeah. is anchored with yeah. protein. Mm-hmm. And even if you're not separating your fuels, but you're getting enough protein, you're going to have an increase in your metabolism because your body is going to be getting more of the amino acids that you need. So even if you just do the small act of increasing your protein and eliminating like processed junk that, you know, doesn't do us any good, you're going to have a good impact on your health. And then essentially, eventually your weight as well. Yeah. I will say when I was really on it and everything, there's a lady, um, and she has a website and it's called Darcy's dishes. Have oh, you ever yeah. followed and her? She has like a monthly she, yes, menu she plan. Does, yes. Menu mm-hmm. plan. And we'll tell you like, this is this and like, it's amazing. Yeah. So if you're starting out, I highly recommend that. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I recommend to my clients just because there are so many resources out there that make it really easy. And a lot of the other things can fit within this plan too. So yeah. like if you look up keto recipes, as long as they've got clean ingredients, then they're going to fit within the Trim Healthy Mama plan and they're going to be an S meal or a fat-based meal. Um, and then you can look up like a lot of the paleo recipes, they all fit within the plan, you know? And so, um, and you just notice that all of those different meal plans, they all have one thing in common that is all of the processed foods are eliminated because that processed food is not good for us. So yeah, let me, yeah, I love let it. me ask you this and it's totally a rabbit hole, but there has been so much stuff come out recently about stevia. So they're mm-hmm. big proponents of mm-hmm. like the, what do you call it? It's not artificial sugar, but like a natural sweetener or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? I have no issue with stevia. I think okay. that stevia has been villainized. Um, I'm not really sh- like as I read the literature, I'm not seeing negative things associated with stevia within actual literature and actual testing. It feels sort of like a witch hunt because stevia yeah. actually has a lot of really good health mm-hmm. benefits. In fact, if you can get green stevia, which is hard to get lately because you know healthy things are hard to come by these days. Um, but if you can get green stevia, you can actually put that in your water if you are not feeling well and it's a, it will help you boost your immune system. So I am just not I've heard of green. I haven't yet. Yes. It's hard to find. Um, but it's not, it's not been bleached in any way. And that's one thing that you do want to watch with stevia. You want to watch like who you're buying it from. You want it to be organic. You want to make sure that it's not, you know, junk stevia, right. but yeah. I think you need to do that with everything. Right. Right. Um, but as far as stevia's health, I don't see it doing any of the negative things that it is often associated with. I know that it's um, linked to people not um, like, what am I trying to say? Like it messes with your cycle. Mm-hmm. I haven't really seen that. Okay. Yeah. I just That's really good to know. Yeah. Because we're definitely trying to cut back on the sugar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm like, well, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. If, so, if you yeah. can't do an alternative. Then... For sure. Yeah. Stevia is a good option. I think I always think Stevia is a good option. And here's a tip that I actually learned from Tr- Trim Healthy Mama is if you don't like the bitterness of Stevia, if you had a little bit of Himalayan salt, it will cut the bitterness and it will not be so bitter. So that's very helpful. Um, Stevia is a good option. Erythritol is a good option. Monk fruit is a good option. Um, And here's a good thing. When you're looking at sweeteners, it can get super confusing. One thing that I tell people is ose is gross. So if it's a sweetener that has ose at the end of it, like sucralose or something like that, ose is gross. Now there is one out there, allulose, which is kind of newer. And um, there's not anything that tells me I should not have allulose currently. But it says O's, so I just can't get over it. But yeah. it's probably fine. You know? <laughs> but all of the other O's, you just kind of want to try and avoid. Like high fructose syrup. Mm-hmm. You know, this is yeah. O's is gross. So that helps it all. What do you think about coconut sugar? Coconut sugar is great. Um, but it, and it has less glycemic impact than, you know, like regular sugar. It's obviously better. Like I yeah. also teach all of my clients, let's take a good, better, best kind of right. mentality yeah. because there's only one perfect person. That was Jesus. The rest of us are just going to fail miserably. Yeah. That's yeah. just the way it is. And we don't want to get into like a perfection mindset yeah. because then we have a tendency to be like, well, first off, you can yeah. just heap failure on top of failure on mm-hmm. top of failure and then just give up. Right. Or you can be like, well, I failed for today, so I'm going to try Monday or next month or in the new year, you know, like, but I think coconut sugar is often a very good alternative. It doesn't necessarily cook the same yeah, and it's yeah. definitely not as sweet. Yeah. Um, so you just, you want to, you know, maybe be off sugar for a little while before you try to, you're not going to go one-to-one um, straight yeah. off. 
when you're going straight from sugar, I think a lot of times erythritol and stevia and things like that. Xylitol is also fine if you don't have animals. Don't use xylitol if you have animals within your house because it's very toxic to animals. You don't want to get, want them to get a hold of it, but yeah, that's another one that's good. And also good for you. Like if you have a sinus infection, we talked about sinus infections last time. If you have a sinus infection and you get sinus rinse, if you've ever done the Neomed sinus rinse, they have one that has xylitol in it because it's antibacterial and antifungal. And so you can use that to rinse with and it will help clear up an infection. So xylitol is good for you. We're also. just learning so much. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I can't get on board with the the rinsing oh it's i know bad. it's the best I know. yeah I know. but i just no i've never some been able to do can, it some people can't you know i can't do a neti pot it's got to be fast and furious in yeah. it you know oh, wait, neti pot you, I, can't do. Use? I use the neti pot oh do you i use like the sinus rinse is like a squeeze like, bottle so oh. it goes whoosh, oh and it's like whoosh, whoosh. It's, out. it's all done <laughs> it's good oh. <laughs> yeah no i do the neti pot she wants the slow pour i just said i don't want to feel like i'm drowning with the neti pot that's yeah. Yeah. I had to figure out like the right angle. Yeah. To get up. And like, even with now. the sinus rinse, like you, you have to be like, okay, I got to breathe at the right time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because just talking about this gives me anxiety. Yeah. I'm shooting something on my nose. I don't want to. Okay. So that, so I guess since we're talking about this one, we also could mention Whole30, which yeah. I know you haven't read. Yeah. So I, um, I haven't per se read this big book. Um, I did enough research that I felt like I knew what I was doing because this is not my cup of tea to read. Like I have a hard enough time with nonfiction to read a diet yeah. book is like, mm -hmm. I just did this though. A couple, I, I guess it was like maybe April or May of the previous year mm -hmm. with my kids because we were noticing a lot of um, people not feeling well. We did this, my son and I did it a hundred percent. My daughter was kind of hit or miss, but even that, like we could see results oh, yeah. from it. And it, and they say in there, so like whole 30 is kind of, it is an extreme thing, mm -hmm. but it's under the thing of like, it is supposed to be 30 days. I know a lot of people live like whole 30 all the time. time. Yeah. And, and she says in there, this main, the lady who wrote it is like, this is not a good thing to do a hundred percent of the time it's too you can definitely yeah. it, it's supposed to help you figure out what is triggering for you yes. like you said so you slowly add things back in after you've reduced down to like hardly nothing and then you add it back and you see if you have any reactions I will say so when we did the reintroduction we didn't have any reactions mm -hmm. but I can see like now being out from it like oh like it makes me more aware yeah, I think of like, mm -hmm. I think that might have affected me. And one of the craziest things is like broccoli. I don't think my body can process broccoli very well. Like it's an issue. Well, broccoli, TMI. Has, TMI. <laughs> broccoli has sulforaphane in it. Yeah. And sulforaphane is actually really, really good for you, but it's detoxifying. And so does it cause gas for you? Is that the issue? It's like, TMI? it's like cramps, like stomach yeah. cramps. Like it's, it's, I feel yeah. like my body cannot process it. Yeah. And it could be that it could be just that your body doesn't like it, but it could be that it's trying to detoxify something within your body that your body is like, no. Nah. So then do yeah. I eat more broccoli? You could, or <laughs> like, well, I would not recommend it because yes. typically that's your body saying, no, this is not good now. I mean, like there are some, what we call Herxheimer reactions, which is when you're detoxing from something, you can have these really extreme things that occur to you, even when it's something that you're doing that's healthy. And it could be something like that with the broccoli, because we do use sulforaphane a lot in practice. It's very good for your hormones. It's good mm. for um, detoxifying your brain. It's good for detoxifying your gut. It's good for resetting your gut bacteria because you have gut bacteria that produce um, like butyrates and things like that. And sulforaphane helps to feed them. So yeah. you could also try taking sulforaphane supplements and see if you have the same issue. Thanks. Just for fun. Just for fun. Just for fun. I'll keep you posted <laughs> on that. I don't even know. I'm sitting here as you're talking going, how in the world did I bring up broccoli? I don't even know how I got here. But you were talking about um, food being, you know. Yes, yeah, so not having food. any. But I, so this is the interesting thing too, because we used to be on the train of sourdough. I say we. Mm -hmm. uh, Raven did it a whole lot more than me. But what I, so we did it and it was great, whatever. And then I took a break. And so then I tried to like reintroduce it again. Every time I've had sourdough since then, I get sick. Really? Like yes. six, six? Like 
Like digestive sick. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Like sinus sick, digestive sick. No, like, like digestive sick. Okay, so you could be reacting to the gluten even though it's already broken down quite a bit. Do you have problems with other? Every time I have bread, um, just regular bread, it does. I feel swollen. Yeah. Yep. And so I do think I'm reacting to the gluten, yep, but I are. really don't want to react to sourdough. Right. I want to be your friend. <laughs> I want to do this, but it's like, but it's interesting to me because it's a different kind of reaction from just regular bread. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas that's like what digestive distress or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Whereas the other, like just eating regular gluten just makes me feel really bloated. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, it could have something to do with the bacteria interacting with your bacteria because sourdough is formed I know. by bacteria, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so it could just, it's probably something as far as bacteria in your gut is reacting somehow. Yeah. So either you, when you did Whole30, this happened after Whole30? Um, the sourdough might have been before. I can't remember. I felt so, like you said it was after. Maybe, after maybe it was. Yeah. Or during. Because yeah. yeah. you were like reintroducing it or something. It might have been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would make sense because it could have been that you, um, you know, changed your, your mm -hmm. microbiome and what's in there. And now what you have in there is not necessarily friends with the bacteria that make sourdough. Probably is not friends with gluten either. Yeah. Most wow. likely. See, I secretly just wanted to have you on so that we could diagnose all my issues. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm so a doctor, I cannot diagnose. I know, but <laughs> figure out all of my issues because there's a lot. But going back, all of that stemmed from Whole30. I don't yeah. think Whole30 is bad. I think I it's actually know. a really, especially if you're looking for something of like I like too overwhelmed to get yeah. rid of everything and and stuff. You will see not just physical results, but like taking all of those things out, you will see a result. I yes, feel like absolutely. with the Trim Healthy Mama, I saw results, but it was like really slow going yes, because I wasn't mm -hmm. taking anything out like overnight yes. and kind of stuff, you know? And, and I feel like Trim Healthy Mama is, and so is keto, very big on dairy. Mm -hmm. it can and be, dairy yeah. is a thing that I'm really starting to question for my family. Yeah. So no, I agree. Another rabbit hole, um, a lot of people do not do well with dairy. Dairy is very inflammatory mm -hmm. and for some people more than others. And also that can um, be affected by what's going on within your gut as well. If you have some leaky gut or you have um, poor mucosal barrier um, health, then you're going to be more reactive to dairy. And so um, whenever we have somebody who's really sick that comes in, we always recommend gluten, dairy, sugar goes away anyways, because we already know that they're inflammatory. We can throw in also corn and yeah. eggs, but you can get to a place where you can eat three things and that's not good either. So, <laughs> yes. you know, we kind of try to be like, all right, so we're going to take this for a little while. And because you want to have diversity, that's super important. Yeah. So as far as like whole 30 or keto, um, or even carnivore, like, I think those are yeah. great diets. If you need like a reset and you need yeah. to do like 30 days of just, I've got to clear everything out and just start fresh. I have no problem with that. Lots of people, that's what they need. I need a hard no. I need, this is, these are the four things I can eat like yeah. for 30 days or so. Yeah, that's fine. And it works well for a lot of people. Um, but as you say, in the long term, yeah. you need to have that diversity. You need to have the diversity in the different foods that you're eating because you need to have diversity in your gut bacteria. And if you're not feeding them all, they're going to die off. And when you don't have good diversity in your commensal, which is a good bacteria, mm -hmm. I talk about the gut and the bacteria in the gut as like, you know, when you go to like a diner and there's a lot of kids there. Okay. It's a place where all the kids hang out. There's the, Is it Chuck E. Cheese? It's not Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> no, right. It's more like a 50s style diner. Okay. okay. You know? <laughs> and you've got this table and you've got all these, you know, teenagers and, you know, they're fine, whatever. As long as there's not too many of them, they're fine. Yeah. But if you let um, the adults get up from the table, now you've got these more teenagers coming in. And next thing you know, they're causing a ruckus but they would not have all arrived there had the adults not gotten up and left the table. Well, it's the same with your bacteria within your gut. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeding the adults yeah. within there, the teenagers are going to take over and then they're going <laughs> to revolt when you eat sourdough, you know, yes. like, I yeah. mean, this is just yeah. what happens. So you want to make sure 
that you are eating seasonally. You want to change things that you're eating in the different seasons and just make sure that you have a lot of diversity and a lot of fruits and vegetables, which a lot of these plans take fruits and vegetables off the table yeah. and villainize them. And your fruits and your vegetables have most of the enzymes and the prebiotic fibers that feed your gut bacteria, which yeah. is so very important. So the thing that I like about Trim Healthy Mama, as far as a long-term plan, is they're really big on um, making it a lifestyle and, and yeah. having food freedom and being able to eat the different things. And if today you want to eat carbs and fats together, that's okay. You know, right. or, you know, if you, if you get yourself to a healed state and you've really done a lot of work within your gut, then you're not going to have the same types of reactions with one meal yeah. as you would when you're like still in a healing state, which you probably are still in a healing state. Sorry, but you are. Oh and, yeah. Um, I'll probably do that forever. <laughs> But as you get further down the road, then you probably won't be as inflammatory. Yeah. You won't be as reactive. So the other thing that happens within your gut is, you know, think, I think, okay, you've got the party, you've yeah. got the bouncer at the door. And if you go in the beginning of the night and you're like, Hey man, like, I know I'm not like on your list, but can I get in anyways? He may let you in because he might still be in a good mood or he might be like, get away, scram. You know, you're not on the list, but it's like no big deal. Right. Right. But then over the course of the night, as you know, 65 other people have been like, Hey man, you really don't want to live you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after a while he's like, no, get out of here. And he starts getting more and more angry. And then next thing you know, somebody might actually be on the list, but he didn't actually see them. And he's scramming everybody away. Just go, go scramming. And that's the way that your body works too. So then your immune system starts to overreact. That's kind of your immune system is that bouncer, right? And your immune system starts to overreact. And then it can start attacking things that are not necessarily bad. And that's where autoimmune issues start happening too. Yeah. So we do have to be very mindful about things that that's our body is analogy. not agreeing with. Yes. You know? That's a great analogy. That's I think it's uh, interesting too. Like you brought up seasonal eating. Like that mm -hmm. is not something we do. Mm -hmm. We don't. Yeah. And that's actually something that he talks about in Eat Smarter. Oh, good. So, um, the next yeah. Book. So the, the other book that I love is Eat Smarter. And this is a book that if you really want to dive deep and you want to know the hows and the whys of all of the foods and the different things, um, this will definitely give you so much information. Like you could probably read it two and three times and still get more information out of every time. However, it's not textbook style. It is more conversational. Um, I'm actually listening to it on, um, I think it's only on Audible this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think this one's only on Audible, which is why I still have Audible because yes. some things yes. are only on there. Um, but it's just very conversational and he like makes all of the different things characters like insulin and glucagon are twin brothers. And he talks about how um, they block each other on the email chain and stuff like that and just um, makes it lots of analogies where you can really kind of better understand what's happening, but he really dives deep into the hows and the whys of the different hormones and the different, all of the things that go on the different types of bacteria that's in your gut and whether they're balanced or not, which is something that we could find on a GI map. They, he talks about the balance between those being a way to know, are you going to absorb more of your calories or less of your calories? And he talks about calories and how, um, calories are actually figured. So when calories first came out, the premise here is that calorie is not actually an accurate way to measure food. And we all know, like we know yeah, intuitively, yeah. if I eat the same amount of calories at McDonald's as I do whole foods, I'm going to, it's going to have an entirely different effect on my body. Right. So when calories first came out, the way that they measured them is they took the food and they like exploded it and then took the matter and measured what was left. And that was what a calorie was. So, but it didn't matter. Was it fat or was it protein or was it junk or whatever? And so um, that just became like a standard unit of measure, yeah. which was, you know, very revolutionary in the time and all of that. And we still talk about calories and all of that. But then they decided that the calorie bomb is what it was called. The calorie bomb mm -hmm. was not necessarily like feasible for all foods. We can't just be exploding things to find out how much they weighed, you know? <laughs> I bet and it's so, fun. <laughs> <laughs> so then they started saying, well, this particular, like fats have this many calories and carbs have this many calories. And so it's more of an estimate. So you now you look at your package and it's not even like accurate. It's an estimate based mm -hmm. on like what's in there. So now you're going based on an estimate, which is, you know, its own thing. But 
nonetheless, we all know that different calories don't act the same within our body. Right. Yeah. And different people seem to be able to eat so many more yeah. calories yeah. and just nothing happens to them. And that boils down to like, what is your metabolic type and what is going on within your body as far as what bacteria you have and what are your hormones doing like your GLP-1 and leptin and all of that. What are all of those doing to tell your body how to use what's in your body? And then is your body going to explode the fat cells and breathe them out or not? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we talked a little bit about yeah. last time. So he also talks a lot about um, that when you are eating, you are building the cells in your body, right? Which we know, we yeah. logically know this, but we don't really think that through. So if you go to buy, if you go to build a house, if you get fine materials, you're going to have a fine material built house, a well structured yeah. thing. If you go and you build it with a bunch of junk, you go to the dump and you buy, <laughs> you bring all of this junk in to build your house. It's just not going to be very stable. And that's what we do when we eat junk food. We're literally going to the junk and building our body with junk. And so just thinking about that, like how much junk am I putting in my body as opposed to how much healthy stuff am I putting in my body? What kind of cells am I building? Mm -hmm. Because every time you eat, you are building cells because your cells are getting rebuilt all the time. Yeah. And then he also talks a little bit about your liver. Your liver is like your main, most important organ. Everything goes through your liver, everything. In fact, your liver filters your blood once every hour. All of your blood goes through mm -hmm. your liver once every hour. And it is tasked, it's like Grand Central Station. It's tasked with taking everything apart and putting the trains back on the different tracks with the different cars and all the things. Is this hormone going to get recirculated? Is this hormone going to get excreted out? You know, all of the things. And when you're putting too much stuff in for the liver to have to manage, then it's going to get sluggish and it's just not going to do what it's supposed to do. And now things are on the wrong track because the conductor is drunk over there. And so, you know, you just end up with a whole array of problems. And so having a better idea of what different foods do within your body and the mechanics of that, I firmly believe the more you know, the better you do. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you can say it until you're, you know, blue in the face, cookies are bad. But what <laughs> happens is you start to think, well, I've had a bad day, so I'm going to eat bad food, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so you start connecting these things. Whereas if you look at it more from a standpoint of this is what it's doing and this is why it's important to eat or not to eat, then you're going to be more apt to make different choices in the long run. Yeah. That's so wow. interesting. I really want to read that book. I love it. It's, I mean, he's very funny too. He's quite funny. There's a couple of like S words and stuff in there. It's not like, <laughs> it's not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but just so you know, if you're really, you know, yeah. don't want any of that. Um, so, yeah, but I, he's, he's very fascinating to read and to listen to. And he's got a podcast. I can't remember, but he talks about it on there. He also has another book called Sleep Smarter. Um, mm -hmm. So this one is Eat Smarter. His name is Sean Stevenson. Um, and then he has another one called Sleep Smarter. So if you have some issues with sleeping, sleeping is so very, very important for your health too. So, you know, as you're thinking about like, how am I going to improve my health in this year? Now that we are here in 2024, um, you know, remember that you've got to think about the five basic things, which is the dress principles that we talk about, which is diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and proper supplementation. He even gives you some supplement suggestions in here. But when you're thinking about sleep, sleep is when your body really regenerates mm -hmm. and really does all of your healing and really just kind of, you know, resets, right? For the yeah. day and everything else. So sleep is also very, very important. I have not personally read Sleep Smarter, but I've heard lots of really good things about that book as well. I'm just not a good sleeper. So maybe you should start with Sleep Smarter. <laughs> but never have been. Like, yeah. It's just, I don't know. So there's a problem there. There's a lot of problems. We've I mean, already you, figured you that out. <laughs> I agree. There are lots of, so many things, Rachel. So many things. Where did she begin? Too many issues. <laughs> Too many issues. Do you have any parting wisdom for how to like be successful for the year. Cause I feel like, you know, January is always super optimistic. I'm going to make all these changes and yeah. whatever. And it's like by March, you're still the same person that you were well, last year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the Valentine's Day and we're like, right. mind, I love chocolate. Forget right. it. I right. just give up, you know? Right. Um, yeah. I think a really big thing 
I tell all my clients, do not strive for perfection. That is the main thing. And pick one thing at a time. So I have a share cast it's called <laughs> The Little Things. And um, I just talk about little blips, you know, little things that can add up over time. Because I believe, like, how do you eat an elephant? One mm-hmm. bite at a time. And I think a lot of the time we make it so big mm-hmm. yeah. that we kind of get into paralysis. Because we're like, I just don't know. I don't know any answers. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And the bottom line is, Anything that you do intentionally to improve your health is going to bring you that much closer to improve your health. So if you could take it down and not make it so big and not make it so overwhelming and just build on like using habit stacking, you take one habit and you get that solidified and then you attach another habit to it and you move with that. Um, Anything that you're going to do to move in that direction Mm -hmm. is going to be good. And if you really just try to think to myself, am I going to the dump and putting stuff into my body? Um, Or is this sugar that I'm eating? Is it like sugar is basically poison? It basically is. We don't want to admit that because we love it so much, so much, but it is, it's, it's very poisonous. It's neurotoxic. It's just, it's not good for you. Yeah. Can you have a little bit? Sure. Of course. You know, (laughs) especially if you don't have it, it's just a little bit of cyanide. It's fine. But but I mean like there's cyanide and apple seeds, you know, so I mean a little bit is okay, but um, it's when we do too much of all of the bad things that is not good. And then also around this time, you know, it's cold try to get out and move yeah. because when you're not moving, then you're not giving any um, movement to your lymph system. Your lymph system only moves with movement. There's not a pumping system. Like your heart pumps your blood, That's but your lymph system does not have that. You have to move in order to move your lymph system and your lymph system is what detoxifies your body. So, and if you're not going to detoxify, you're not going to lose fat. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. That being said, you cannot outrun a bad diet. So you kind of <laughs> need both, you know. Um, yeah. But try and get some movement in, even if it's just like standing in front of your mirror and like doing muscles and like acting like you're strong for a couple of minutes, just holding them. Even just that resistance is a little something, you know, flapping your arms like a bird and acting funny in front of your kids, whatever. Get that system moving. And that is something that often doesn't happen very well when it's cold and we can't get outside. So, well, I have learned so much. I do too. I feel very, I know a a lot smarter. Yeah. But hopefully not overwhelming. (laughs) I did. I sound smart when I said that. It's still attainable, not overwhelming. No, 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 not overwhelming. Yeah. No, there's so much that I, I think I just realized that I don't know. So, (laughs) well, I'm excited to read this. I know the eat smarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. We'll have to, maybe we'll all read it and then maybe we can do a, a follow up of like yeah. we read it. And, That'd be fun. And yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'm actually going to, like with my clients, I'm going to encourage them in January to read that book specifically and talk about it because oh, cool. it just gives you so much information and it's personable. So, yeah. yeah. And we will link all of Simile's things mm-hmm. in the description. And if you, your share cast is available. So, yeah. if you have Marco Polo, even if you don't, you just get on there and make an account. It's not, yeah, a, it doesn't it's cost anything. Yep. Um, and we use that to chat yeah. just yeah. regularly. Yes, too. if you're not familiar with Marco Polo yeah. and you are a mom that is busy all the time, Marco Polo could yes. be your best friend yes. because you don't have to both be available at the same time to hold a conversation. I know. Yeah, and amazing. I feel like this is totally squirrely, but I feel like the people that I polo with, I know more like day-to-day stuff, what's going on with them versus like people that I like actually call or text or yeah. stuff because she you just have to make so much time mm-hmm. for that. Yeah. Whereas polo is like, I can do it real quick. My family loves to make fun of me while I'm doing it, but yeah, that's why I'll only do it in the car when I'm alone. Yes. Most of the time I'm in the car and Marco Polo as well. I'm actually an ambassador for Marco Polo as well. And so, um, they're doing a lot of things to improve their community. And one of the things that I love about Marco Polo is they're, they do not want their customers to become products like with Facebook and Instagram, you're the product, right? Because of the advertising. And so Marco Polo is very, very um, intentional, that that is not the way that they want to run their business at all. So they have a plus plan that you can purchase. Yeah. And, um, that is where they get their money from. It's from people who purchase that plus plan, but they do have a free plan for people as well, but they do not want to market your information or your activity to other people. So well, that's I think good. it's a very, 
um, it's a good app all the way around yeah. as far as, and it's yeah. been neat to be able to kind of get to know some of the developers and things like yeah. that and hear their vision for the app as well. So do you have a link for that as well? Like if people sign up? Um, I have a link. I don't know how long they're, they will still oh, be okay. going though. Um, but currently I can give out free plus passes for two months. So if either of you don't have that, I'm happy to give it to you. But. Do you have it? I am on my mom's. There you go. See, and that's what I do. I do the family. Is that legal? I you're going to be arrested plan. by the Marco Polo police. No, they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. He talks about it with them actually. Yeah. They really don't care. Yeah. Um, we have the family plan and some of my family are on and then a couple of my friends because yeah. the family plan has like it covers, five people yeah, like, or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. And we didn't have that many people. So See, it's just cheaper to do yeah. that, to go in together and do it that way. So too. Marco Polo has a lot to do with my mental health. Yeah. Like, oh, it yeah. is very beneficial oh, yeah. for yeah. my mental health. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we could have wrapped that into the mental health should, and wellness. Yeah, for sure. You, you need to have. have, you need to have at least one friend. That's on Marco Polo. That, well. That you can cry yes, in front of. Exactly. That, yes. Yeah. And you can just, because the funniest thing about Raven and I's relationship is that when we lived in Katie, we were not close. But as soon as I moved and we started spending more time talking on polo, <laughs> yeah, like that's how we true. became super close. Yeah. So well, and after my friend's husband was killed on the helicopter accident, we became super close over Marco Polo. And then like our little group of friends who were all trying to kind of take care of her after that. Yeah. All really didn't know each other because we were all just kind of all mm -hmm. over the place and we all got to know each other through Marco Polo. So it's pretty cool. I'm actually running a sugar-free challenge on a Marco Polo group right now as well, which is, which I do every month. So, um, that's pretty cool yeah. as well. And super helpful to people, but I have rules on Marco Polo. You cannot be like on my share cast. I do my hair, but in the group, <laughs> I don't in the group. I might be actually in the process of doing my hair, you know, because yeah. the rule is you just come as you are in the group. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for coming Yeah, because we really have learned a lot yeah. and we will definitely have you on again. Yeah. We just are so, I feel like everyone is always so <laughs> hopeful about the new year and like yeah. where we're going. And so hopefully everybody, that's where I was going. Yeah. Hopefully that's everyone can, yes, yeah. find something to work on Yeah, and just start well, there. And we're created to kind of restart too yeah. and to have these different seasons i think that the lord created seasons so that we would have opportunities to restart and refresh so we've got spring we've got the new yeah. year we've got advent and all of that there are all different opportunities and lent different opportunities to you know kind of take stock yeah and figure out how we want to restart and even the beginning of each month that's why i run a sugar free challenge every month because yeah. the beginning of each month you can be like all right we are where we are. Now, where do we go from here? Yeah. So, yeah, I That's appreciate really you having yeah. me for sure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Yay for reading. <laughs> Bye. Bye.